Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Matthew Charlesworth. The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And with your spirit. We welcome you to this twelfth Sunday of Ordinary Time, wherever you are. We remember especially the prayers that you have asked us to remember. As we come together, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, that and I have greatly sinned, sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear many whispering. Terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him, say all my familiar friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who test the righteous, who see the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy, from the hand of evil doers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame has covered my face. To my kin, I have become an outcast, a stranger to the children of my mother. Zeal for your house consumes me, and taunts against you fall on me. In your, your great, great mercy, answer me, O Lord. But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favor. In your great mercy, answer me, O God, with your salvation that never fails. Lord, answer, for your mercy is kind. In your great compassion, turn towards me. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God's seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his own in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the seas and everything that moves in them. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, a sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin. And so death spread to all men, because all men sinned. Sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses even over those whose sins were not like the transgressions of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Spirit of Truth will bear witness to me, says the Lord, and you also are witnesses. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his apostles, Have no fear of men, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will be not known. What I tell you in the dark, utter in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim upon the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body that cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's will. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's first reading contains a word that has taken on new dimensions and has been felt more often in these days than in the past. Terror is on every side. 
we currently are continuing to face the terror of a pandemic. And that's been enough to make us all anxious and fearful. But even before COVID-19, we knew that terror was a reality in our world. Terrorism is real. And after 9-11, we all felt the effects of terrorism in our daily life. But terrorism is a label of fear. The fear comes from two places, not only from the gravity of the terrorist act, but also from its utter unpredictability. Terror is on every side, was the cry of Jeremiah the prophet in our first reading. Jeremiah was not a confident prophet. He didn't really want to be a prophet. He would have opted out if he could have. But there was no sidestepping God's will. Like in all our lives, sometimes, we're in the wrong place at the wrong time. His life was one of suffering. He had to call out the sins of his contemporaries. He predicted the destruction of Jerusalem. And he was labeled a traitor to his country. He was pilloried and publicly punished. He spent his last years away from his homeland. Yet through it all, he had an unwavering trust in the Lord. Who had called him. He had confidence only that neither he nor his cause could be abandoned. The early church had its fair share of terror in condemnation and persecution, but the antidote was found in the words of Jesus at the end of today's gospel. You are of more value than many sparrows. God is always to be trusted and regardless of the seriousness of the situation, God is present as a deliverer. Nothing, not even a strand of hair on one's head, can be lost. Jesus tells us this, because God is all-knowing and all-loving. This is a distinctively Jewish type of argument. If God does X for an unimportant thing, how much more will he act for an important reason? If God cares for the little sparrows and even the tiny hairs on our heads, how much more will he watch over the lives of his son's disciples? How much more will he care for each one of us who are infinitely loved by him? Can we trust in God as Jeremiah trusted in him? COVID-19 has highlighted for us just how fragile life is. None of us really know what might happen next. Terrors and fears may come from a car accident, a doctor's report, a defective plane, or a virulent pathogen. It may appear in a hijacker rushing the cockpit of a plane, or a thief entering a darkened house. It may come from the fear of contracting an invisible disease, or of infecting those we love. But wherever terror comes from, our faith tells us that it never has the last word. Our life itself is but the prelude to an everlasting life with God. And no one can take that from us. For the Lord loves to listen to the needy and does not spurn his own in their chains, as the psalmist said today. O Lord, give us an increase of faith and a spirit of trust and confidence. Help us to trust in the good of other people. Help us to be surprised, not with fear, but with gratitude for all that you've done in our lives. Those who belong to God are people of obedience. We yearn to know God's will. Thy will be done, we pray every day. It is that virtue that is underscored in today's second reading. In our autonomous culture, Obedience has, unfortunately, been too often seen as demeaning. To be obedient is seen to be obsequious or spineless. Self-assertion is the hallmark of the modern person. We're told we have to be autonomous, spontaneous, and always in control. But that's just not true. A microscopic virus was able to prove how wrong that view was. Paul tells us that the obedience of Christ has brought us to new life, just as Adam's disobedience brought chaos and death. 
Christ did not come to assert his own will or to follow his own bliss. He came in self-surrender to lead us to the Father and send his Holy Spirit because of his love for us, to each one of us. For myself, a good way to check whether I'm listening to God's will is to ask myself this question, which I first heard when I first prayed the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. Is what I'm doing going to build my kingdom or God's kingdom? Am I doing my will or God's will? Am I trying to do everything on my own? Or can I allow myself to depend on the God who created me and loved me into existence? Our obedience to God does not make us less than. Instead, it offers life and true freedom. Obedience reminds us that we are not alone. We are called to be men and women for others. Not selfish, but rather able to put others' needs before our wants. Let's reflect Christ in the world through our own willingness to trust in God, to not fear the terrors of the night, but to hold fast to and to trust in what the Lord desires for us. His desires will be our own deepest desires too. Obedience means surrendering to what God asks of us. Fidelity in a relationship, honesty in business, to persevere in overcoming an addiction, to love my neighbor regardless of their race or gender or sexual orientation. Obedience embraces going the extra mile, turning the other cheek, depriving ourselves for the needy, of imitating God in every action, decision, and thought in our lives. Obedience to God means acknowledging that He is the Creator, and we, all of us, are His creation. It means seeing God's image in my neighbor, so that I do not fear those that are other in my life. It means seeing God's image even in the neighbor who cannot see that image in themselves. Let us resist scapegoating our neighbor from a place of fear, but rather learn to love instead. When we do these things, when we are obedient to God, then there will be no terror on every side, for the God we trust is with us always. Let's pray today that we might truly have a heartfelt sense of God's loving presence in our lives. Amen. Let us stand and profess our belief in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers to the Lord, especially those prayers that have been sent to us and those prayers that are with you at home.
that the church and her leaders, especially Pope Francis and our bishops, may always joyfully proclaim the free gift of salvation found in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the nations of the world will reject the ways of violence and vengeance and work for justice and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That all those who are suffering or going through any difficulty may commit their cause to the Lord and know his strength in their weakness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the daily actions of our lives may always bear witness to the faith we profess with our lips, even in the face of opposition. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That all the faithful departed, who have faithfully followed Christ, may be welcomed by him into the presence of the Father. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that we can make all these prayers, spoken and unspoken to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, your Son and our brother. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. This we are forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifested as the Church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Buti Tlhale and Duncan Sorke, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died, in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us pray for peace in our hearts and in our homes and families. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, 
who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Today we celebrate Father's Day. We remember all fathers and, at this time of communion, ask the Lord to bless our fathers. We thank God for the many good fathers who show great love and work hard to provide for their families, both emotionally and materially. Take a moment now, at this time of communion, to pray with us for your father, wherever he may be. Lord our God, we thank you for the gift of fathers and fatherhood. We ask you today to bless all those who are fathers, biologically and in spirit, to others. Bless them for their tireless efforts and love. May they come to know you and imitate you, the one true Father of us all. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. The eyes of all who look to you, Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.